<clears throat> Hello everyone. Uh, this is another little installment of Kitchen Kung Fu with Shen. Uh, anyway, the last couple of times we were talking about uh, some of the different Wing Chun tools for basic, you know, arm formations that we use. And, uh, you know, in other martial arts, and uh, like Shaolin, for example, usually they're, they're doing punches or pushing or they're doing, you know, different hand formations, right? That they'll use, but it's always on the end of kind of the same punch or the same push or same block, right? And uh, in those martial arts, as soon as you're, you're done with the strike, then it, it's kind of useless and you have to pull it back. Uh, so there's really no structure after the punch is done to protect you, right? And so that's why uh, Wing Chun developed these angles of the arm. And it's almost always 135 degrees. So if you're looking at a 90 degree angle and a 180 degree angle, right, where it's straight, then 135 is that little angle in between. So it's a 45 degree angle in between. And so when we use those tools, we can strike with them, but then after striking or pushing with the tool, then the tool actually has structural integrity to block without doing a block, right? So we don't have to do a punch and then a separate block, right? And another punch. We can basically just use the Wing Chun tool and it strikes and it's blocking at the same time. And we might angle the structure to change the block, right? But then we can always strike from there, okay? So in Wing Chun, the three basic main tools are Tan Sao, which is this, this hand that is kind of flat. <clears throat> and some people say, oh, it's a beggar's hand, right? He's asking for something and that's down here. Uh, but I find it's better to actually have the 135 degree angle going on, right? And that you don't just flatten it out, okay? And so a tonsil, it's kind of like holding a pizza in one hand or, or a waiter holding the plate, right? And so we have tonsil, and what that does is when energy comes at us, tonsil helps stop and disperse that energy right with this angle and so when somebody throws straight energy at that tonsil then the tonsil kind of stops it and redirects that energy okay and then quite often we'll take the tonsil and we'll turn it slightly so it absorbs some of that power and deflects it off to the side and then the reason why we have our hand angled like this is it actually keeps the opponent's arm from going over that hand and hitting me, right? If I just do a block like this, then this can, can fall inward and, and I could get hit, right? But when I keep that 135 degree angle, it won't collapse. And when somebody strikes and they try to go over that, then they end up pulling the arm with that hand that's locked in, right? And when they pull the whole arm, then that alerts me that I need to change, shift and change the 135 from being vertical to being horizontal. And so then that leads to our next tool, which is the Bong Sao, 